Hey everyone, this is Custom Spray Mods, the show that goes over DIY auto painting, DIY custom painting, paint correction, and much more. With a team of professionals that have been in the trade for over 30 years, this is a show that brings you the best info when it comes to auto painting and repairs. To learn how to fix your car yourself, save yourself some money, hit that subscribe button, be a part of the experience. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Custom Spray Mods. Now this is my 2012 model Ford Ranger truck and I've put a dent in it. I've got a price from a panel shop to get it fixed for about $850 so I thought I'd give it a go myself using some cheap hammer and dollies. I don't have a stud puller or a welding uh, pulley machine so I'm going to use a hammer and dolly to knock out that dent as best I can and then I'm going to get a professional in to show us how to put some body filler in the right way. So this is it, check it out. Okay, so basically what I want to do is try and knock this dent out with um, a, a hammer and dolly, get something behind there, put a dolly on the front, knock it out from behind. And to do that, I have to remove the uh, plastic splash um, trays that are on the inside of this guard. Now these um, clips are quite difficult to get off and I had to break them all. So rather than try and save them, just break them and then they're only like 10 or 20 cents to replace. So rather than go to all the effort to try and save them, just yeah, do it the easy way. So I've got this off, now I'm going to try and knock out that dent and the idea is to try and use as less filler as possible. So by correcting that dent from behind means we use um, less body filler, less body filler, the better the repair. So. Okay, so I've just received a hot tip that if you can't get behind the panel with a hammer, you can put the dolly behind the panel and hit it from the outside and as the dolly bounces back, it's going to knock that dent out. And um, I've tried it and it seems to be working. Alrighty, so we've, um, we've repaired the dent with the hammer and dolly. We've got it out as much as we can. Now it's time to put the filler in. And uh, I've got Pete from Melomotive and he's going to help us uh, apply the filler, give us some tips and tricks. Also go through the different blocks and the different types of filler you can use uh, for different types of, uh, of dents. So uh, first thing we're going to do is sand it with some 80 grit. Now you can use a, a block to sand it or you can do it with a machine, whatever you got. And uh, we're going to do that now, so check it out. Alright, thanks Dave. So you guys have done a great job here knocking the dent out. We've got it up pretty close to where we want, so now it's time to get it ready for some filler. So we're going to sand it, as Dave mentioned, we're going to use 80 grit. Um, on the filler it says 80 grit, so that's what we're going to go with. So we've just been sanding that. Uh, you know, at home if you don't have access to a power tool or an air sander, you can just do it with hand hand sander, it just takes a couple minutes, but for today, just to make the video quick for you guys, we're just going to grab a power sander and strip that old paint off. We don't want to sand this whole area again, we really just want to concentrate it in here, so we don't want to put the whole sander straight on, we're just going to use about a quarter or about a third of the pad and push it into the area that we want to sand. Now what we want to do is figure out how much fill we're going to use. So all we need to do is check the depth of the dent. So easy way to do it is just using a filler applicator. White on white here is really good but it works with almost anything. We can use this to see what the depth of the filler will be. What we can do is if you put that on there square, you can see the shadow between the car and the filler applicator. And that pretty much means that's how much body fill we're going to use as we come through there. So we're about to start mixing up some body filler. So we're going to use the Upol P38. P38 is really good to, to, to build a reasonable dent. Uh, it goes straight to metal, straight to fiberglass, uh, old paints, primers, etc. Not really on top coats, but pretty much bulletproof filler. You can use it for almost anything. The so first thing we do is just open up the can. You can see it comes with the hardener and an applicator in the lid, which is great. Next thing we do is open up the can. Sometimes you open the filler, it's got this, it's got the resin on the top. So what we need to do first is mix that. If we don't mix that, it's not going to go off properly, it's going to be dry at the bottom. It's just not going to work for us, so we need to mix that through, all the way through the whole can first before we can use it. So the filler's all nice and mixed, you can see there it's all consistent, not too much resin on the top. What we do is with an applicator, we're just going to pull out as much filler as we need. That there, that's going to be more than enough for what we need for this job. Now we add the hardener. 
Hardener is the little one that says Hardener on the back of it. And this is, in most cases, it's about 50 to 1. That's the mixed ratio. How do you judge 50 to 1? Easiest way, basically put the filler in a nice little lump, nice little bowl. Just get the fill, get the hardener, and just try and do a stripe across it. And that's it, real easy. You want to mix that through thoroughly. When we mix it, you want to push it down onto the onion board, onto the mixing paper, and pull it in one direction. It minimizes the air. You don't want to whip it or stir it. It puts air bubbles into the filler. How do we know when it's mixed? When it's all one colour, consistent, you can't see the red in a single spot anymore, and it's all ready to go. So today I'm going to use two applicators to put it on. So again, we want to first coat we want to put on really thin over the whole repair and push it in hard, and that's so we get the right amount of adhesion. And then we'll start to build it up a little bit thicker. So before when we pulled the applicator over the top, we knew that there was a whole heap to fill in this area, and not so much over this side. So as we put it in, that's how we load it in. So I put a little bit extra there at the moment. A little bit more here. Now what we do is put this down, we grab our nice clean applicator, and we drag all that through in one go. So you put that through here, how we had it before, Give it a slight curve that way, leave a little bit extra as we go. And pull that through, we're going to do that again, just a few little air bubbles there. That's it, clean up the edges. Normally when you fill up a job like this, you'll have to do two or three or sometimes even four rounds of filler work. It's almost impossible to get it right the first time because the filler sinks in a little bit as it goes off, as it goes hard. You need to sand it, a few little air bubbles, a few little low areas. But this one here, this has loaded up the bulk of the dent. So what we'll do, we'll wait for that to go off, we'll sand it, and then we'll skim up a fine filler over the top. So the filler, it's been about 10 minutes or so, the filler's all dried. It's nice and hard, it's not tacky on the top, so now we're ready to start sanding it. Right. So we're just going to work right on this edge, just to get that, that line or that surface to run through in here. So we just put the block up there, the, the amount of flex in that block is going to make it right. And we just work on the back edge of the block around that corner. And that's getting really close already, you can see that that radius is running through really nice, got this nice flat area. So next what we want to do is ima this imaginary or this actual band of the flare of the wheel arch here. We want to rub that back this way into that nice flat area. So again, same block, it curves, put it up on its edge, it's going to follow that shape of that flare right into that area there. So same piece of paper again. And then we just work that in. Sanded this through, we've had a bit of a look at it, ready to put some more filler on. We've noticed that we've got a bit of a high spot, that's where the metals push too far out this way. So it's going to, you know, it doesn't give us the right shape of the car that we need. It means we've put heaps too much filler in around it to get it to work. So this area up here, we're going to knock that back in. We're just going to get a little dolly here and just slide it up behind there. Then we're just going to grab a little hammer and just gently tap that high spot in. So, when I got the dolly behind there, we're going to use the hammer. I don't want to hit the steel hard onto the dolly, because it'll stretch the steel and it'll pop it out even further. The dolly holds the steel next to the high spot, and then it allows us a bit of an air gap behind there to push the high spot back in. Okay, we've mixed up a second type of filler. This is a fine filler. It's it has a lot more resin in it, it's a lot more creamier, smoothy, smoother, it's more like honey consistency. Uh, not, it's not as dry, not as aerated. It means we can lay it on really flat, 
um, work it really nice and fill up some of those little holes that we've got. So again, first coat really thin, push it on hard just to make sure we fill up any pinholes, any little scratches that are there, cover the whole area that we're going to work on. And now we can start to load it up a little bit thicker. So we know that it needs a little bit extra up in this top section. So we'll put on a little bit extra up there. And just blend it slightly bigger, a little bit larger area than we did with the previous one. We don't want to put any filler on the glossy paintwork. We only put the filler where we've sanded. Here, you can see on, up on this edge, it's a little bit thick on the edge. What you want to do, it's called feathering it out. So what you want to do is just make the edge of the applicator nice and clean. Put more pressure on one side, a little bit exaggerated, put more pressure on one side, lighter where the filler side is, and then just pull that through. And it gets rid of that hard edge. This gives us a nice feather edge. It makes it a lot easier to sand it out later on. Alright, so it's been about 10 minutes or so. This fine filler has gone off, it's nice and hard, it's not sticky at all. So we're ready to start sanding. Now, so we put a little bit extra on, so we're going to start rubbing it through. We're just going to use some 80 grit again on the drawer block, um, just to knock the top off it. You might notice that as I'm sanding, I'm only sanding 45 degrees both ways. That's Really good technique. Um, whenever you've got a shape, say for example, we've got this flare of the wheel arch coming down here, set at 45 that way and 45 that way, like perpendicular to the surface. Easiest way to do it. I'm not sanding long way over the flare, I'm not sanding straight across the flare. You pretty much go you know, opposite 45, easiest, fastest way to get the shape right. Now we've talked about this line in here before where it changes direction, so I'm just going to put the block up on its edge and dig into that. So most of that fill is gone, taking shape, two little areas. We're not going to go any further with the 80 grit, we're going to step it up to 120 grit now, get a smooth finish, take less material off as we go. So a little bit of 120 grit on the sanding block, and just keep going. So we've cleaned out those couple little pinholes. Hopefully they show up on the camera. Now what we want to do is just fill the holes. We're not trying to load up filler like we did previously. So we're just going to wipe in those holes really nice and tight. So tiny little amount of filler on the corner of the applicator. Again, concentrate in on those holes. Just go over the whole job. Wherever you see a hole, just push it in, wipe it in nice and hard. And then what we do, clean the edge of the applicator. Take a nice crisp edge and just come through bit nice and firm and just pull up all the extra. Alright, so you can see the radius turns the corner. Pretty much all we do is we put something flat on there and we can see where the panel starts to turn, where it starts to pull away. That's going to be consistent all the way down that panel. So what we want to do is not affect the flat area, we only want to sand the radius. So to do that, Protect the flat area that we've already made with a piece of masking tape. We start up high and then run it down parallel to the edge of the panel. So that's it. So that's protected this area so we're not going to come back and touch that with any sandpaper and it's just going to expose the area that we want to work on which is that radius to flick it around the corner. So there's quite a bit of extra body filler there at the moment. So we're just going to use the 80 grit on the block, take most of it off. That's the bulk of it gone, so now I just jump up to some 120 grit paper. Still rubbing 45 degrees in both directions. Really good trick here is to have the stamp paper finish short of the block. What that, ha what that means is as you're going around the corner, the block acts as a guide on the radius that's already nice on both ends. Of the, so it's up here and up here. We use that panel that's already nice and straight as a guide. So that where the sandpaper is, it makes that corner perfect to blend it into both sides.
That's it. It's nice and straight. So what we do, pull that tape off. You can see we haven't affected the previous repair. Now what we can do is finish off in some 180 grit, ready for some primer. So we'll just do all the nice little blends and subtleties with the 180 grit. Keep the 180 grit. What we want to look for is little dags. We've got a little piece of body filler here, a little piece here. There's some 80 grit marks up in here. We want to get all the nice blends, all those little dags. Get rid of all that. All right, so we've, we're just about done. The repair's all done. Uh, which now we would do is prepare this for primer. So the area that we're going to prime end up going to be, it's probably going to be around this big here. You can still see we've got some shiny paint. We can't go over the shiny paint with anything, so what we have to do is sand that so that the primer will stick to it. So I've just got a bit of 240 grit paper. And what we'll do is just give it a light sand. We're not trying to sand it to change shape. All we want to do is sand it to get rid of the gloss. But again, we have to sand it. We have to hold the block in the correct position so we don't change the shape too much. Put the guy over it. Don't need to make it too wet. Then we get rid of that one, get a nice clean one, and dry it. Really important that we dry it off. Alright, alright, done. That's the repair process. Finished for now, fill is rubbed, put in, rubbed, clean, pumped off, ready for paint. So, I'm gonna hand it back to Dave, he's gonna show you how to put the primer on. Today we're using this stuff, it's called All You Need. The reason why it's called All You Need is because it's all you need. This is, this stuff's amazing. It can go for bare metal, on top of filler, on top of paint. It's high building, it's waterproof. You can sand it dry, sand it dry, wet. You can paint on top of it. Um, you can leave it out in the moisture for up to two years. It's, it's a waterproof product, and this job here is gonna be absolutely perfect. So, I'll give it back to Dave, and he'll show you how to put this stuff on. Okay, so now you know how to repair a dent, and you probably saved yourself a couple of hundred bucks. Now it's time for Dave to remove the rest of these parts and uh, get it ready for paint. So yeah, tune in next time and we'll show you how to uh, blend your paint and um, fix up your car even more better. Yeah.